This is a rocket launcher, and these are 12 more that we are going to test for their total damage and DPS. We will also answer the following questions. Which one is the best legendary rocket? How much bonus damage do they gain from Wolfpack rounds? And what perks further increase their damage? So without further ado, let's see how much of a meta rocket launchers currently are. Starting with the oldest exotic and most broken of all. Wardcliffe Coil, which is mostly famous for sometimes disintegrating bosses. It shoots a volley of auto-tracking missiles. The mechanized auto-loader weapon trait can be used to increase its DPS, since you don't need to reload it. But that requires to preemptively stockpile heavy ammo on the location you will do damage from. Either way, for boss damage it doesn't do much and I can't figure out under what conditions someone could use this weapon. Two-tailed Fox. It has seen an increase in its usage since it got updated to the subclass 3.0 verb system and of course after the introduction of its catalyst. It has a high base reload time and it will be very difficult to fire all 10 rockets without using something like Rain of Fire or Radiant Dance Machines. Even though intrinsically is a void weapon, from my testing it is better to use two of the same and one different search mode. True. The truth is, it's bad. It's bad. known as the Gambit Invasion weapon back when machine guns weren't very popular, and rightfully so. In a theoretical way, this weapon can do high burst DPS because of its magazine size of 3 rockets, but it should not be used as part of a damage loadout since its rockets have proximity detonation and in most cases you will lose the impact damage which will make a huge difference. Deathbringer Deathbringer is an exceptional weapon. You need to overshoot the projectile, detonate it above your target and let the void orbs track on it. The further the orbs travel, the higher their damage. The catalyst makes them scale to max damage faster and as a side effect you can overshoot closer to your target making the void orbs easier to track on it. It is highly effective on bosses that don't move around and aren't in a closed environment. Templar for example. Its damage will become inconsistent if the boss moves or for any reason the Void Orb doesn't track to the target. Eyes of Tomorrow I feel like Eyes is a wannabe ad clear weapon, even more so now that Bungie added the ability to refund ammo every time you activate its weapon trait Adaptive Ordnance, which still doesn't make sense for my small brain. Nevertheless, its results are kinda surprising. Before damage started, I preloaded an adaptive ordnance volley to take advantage of its damage increase. I would like for it to get a catalyst that somehow increases even by a small amount its damage potential, like maybe if all 6 rockets hit the same target and ignition is triggered or whatever, although it will never happen. Galarhorn one of the most iconic destiny weapons and if I may say one of the most overpowered exotics. And let me explain myself. It can be used very effectively as an ad clear weapon. It acts as a support weapon in fireteam damage by providing wolf pack rounds to nearby legendary rocket users and it is actually a decent damage option. The bad thing about Gali is that it costs 25 bucks when the 30th anniversary pack is not on sale making it the most expensive exotic weapon in the game. And they said Destiny 2 isn't pay to win. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> what? Moving on to the legendary rocket. First, let's clear some things out. For some reason, the Sandbox team decided that half the rockets are going to be irrelevant or straight up bad. They have set the base damage to that of the high impact frames. Then, they gave precision frames a 10% damage reduction and adaptive and aggressive frames a 10% damage increase. I don't see any benefit high impact frames have to explain the reasoning. I guess precision frames have intrinsic tracking but that is a lot of damage to pay for it. In other words, only adaptive and aggressive rockets are worth the attention currently. I hope this gets revised at some point because it is one of the worst sandbox implementations ever. Briefly, I should also note that every rocket is doing damage in two parts, the impact damage and the explosion damage. This is important to understand as there are perks that only buff one of them. 
Speaking of which, Legendary Rockets have a unique magazine option called Impact Casing, which gives a 10% increase on the impact damage. About wolf crowns now, they also seem to have an impact and explosion damage. From my testing, they were consistently inconsistent. What? What the fuck? What I mean is that they don't always do the same damage. Sometimes they don't track, and others they don't explode? Question mark. The most important thing is that they do the same damage per hit, no matter the rocket's frame. With that out of the way, let's get to the perks. Cluster bomb. Perk that after the explosion damage spawns 8 mini bombs that scatter around, and each one does a little bit of damage. Their damage is minimal and inconsistent because they don't track to any target and probably will bounce away from it. They don't interact with the wolf pack rounds, making the weapon do basically base damage. Vorpal Weapon a flat 10% bonus damage against bosses. The bad thing is that the damage increase is low. The good thing is that it's always active and that it also applies the damage bonus to wolf pack rounds. Lasting Impression It gives a 25% explosion damage increase. The perk adds a 3 second delay to the explosion, thus lowering its DPS and making it more prone to hitting immune. In regards to wolf pack rounds, the 25% explosion damage increase also gets applied to them. Frenzy a 50% flat bonus damage. It is a perk that requires the user to preemptively activate it before damage starts and keep it active. The good part is that wolf pack rounds get the damage increase as well. Explosive Light. You can have a total of 6 stacks or 7 if crafted with the enhanced variant. Each rocket fired will consume 1 stack and will get a 25% bonus to impact and explosion damage. This perk is mainly good for burst DPS and small duration damage phases, because after the stacks are consumed, your rockets are doing base damage. It also doesn't affect wolf pack rounds in any way. Chill clip. Although it doesn't give a damage increase, you can do extra damage to the target from the freeze and shatter stasis effect. The most effective way to make use of this perk is when you have wolf pack rounds active, and that is because wolf pack rounds are considered separate shots and so each one will trigger the effect. It seems like that the shatter damage is fairly inconsistent and requires the target to stay frozen for a while. Wolf pack rounds seem to constantly repress the slow effect and as a result stops the target from taking the shatter damage I guess. Because of that, I wasn't able to replicate the shatter damage consistently. In a team based scenario, only one guardian should use a chill clip rocket launcher since the slow, freeze and shatter effect isn't instanced. Ha! <laughs> Nature. Bait and switch. A 35% bonus damage that also affects wolf pack rounds. This perk requires you to shoot with all your weapons before it activates, making it a good or a bad thing depending on which are the other weapons you are using. The greatest part is that since wolf pack rounds are considered separate shots, if you time it correctly, they can help you activate the perk for the second time, and as a result, you only shoot one rocket at base damage. Surrounded. The enhanced variant applies on rockets a 47% impact damage and a close to 42% explosion damage increase. Fun enough, wolf pack rounds get the 42% explosion damage increase, but they only get a 5% impact damage increase. I don't know if this is intended or not, but it happens. That concludes the important perks, so let's talk about the weapons. Blowout, one of the adaptive frames with the most perk combinations, which can be obtained from the Crucible. For the third column perk, we would want field prep so that we can have up to a maximum of 10 ammo reserves. For damage, it can roll with Cluster Bomb, Vorpal, Lasting Impression, Frenzy, and Explosive Light. Frenzy and Lasting Impression are the best for total damage, with a second doing lower DPS. For burst damage, we would pick Explosive Light. Red Herring, a craftable rocket acquired from the Throne World. The pair combinations this one can have are again on the third column, preferably field prep for 10 ammo reserves, and for damage perks, it can roll Frenzy or Lasting Impression with the first being the better overall option. The Hothead. 
a rocket that is currently not obtainable in game since Bungie had the great idea of removing weapons from the nightfall rotation and adding them back later, which is a big brain move, I guess. For the third column, we would again prefer field prep for the max 10 ammo reserves. It can also roll with auto-loading holster, which can come in handy if you are doing a weapon damage rotation. For damage perks, we have the option of Warpal, Lasting Impression and Explosive Light, which I would personally prefer compared to the other options. It can also roll with Clown Cartridge, a utility perk which while it doesn't increase the damage, instead increases your DPS by loading two rockets in the mag after every reload. The last adaptive option and the most interesting of all is Apex Predator from the last Wish Raid. It comes with reconstruction as a third column perk, it will passively reload up to two rockets in the mag. It has a variety of damage perks to choose from, like Vorpal, Frenzy, Explosive Light, Bait and Switch, or Surrounded. In my opinion, Bait and Switch is overall the best option here. While Surrounded is the highest damage increase, it's a situational perk to keep active during damage, and in many cases, someone could even say unusable. Unfortunately, this rocket launcher can only hold up to 9 rockets, which cuts off a big chunk of total damage output. Moving on to the aggressive frames. Pump in the Night A craftable rocket from Season of the Haunted. It can only be obtained from Banshee or Zur if they feel like selling it, and you can unlock its pattern with deep side harmonizers. Regarding its perks, we want field prep for the maximum of 10 ammo, and for damage, we can choose between Vorpal, Frenzy, or Chill Clip. Although Frenzy would be the better option, I would suggest picking Chill Clip since it's one of the few rockets that can roll with it. Cold Comfort is one of the new additions to the game, and if I may say, one of the most power crept rockets. It doesn't need field prep to reach the total of 10 ammo, and it rolls with Envious Assassin, which can overflow the magazine up to 3 rockets. As for damage perks, it can roll with Explosive Light or Bait and Switch or Chill Clip. Preferably, you would want Bait and Switch since it's the highest damage bonus. Paired with its Origin Trait Restoration Ritual, which prepares an emergency reload after doing a finisher, you can fire up to 4 rockets before reloading. I should give the honorable mention to Haze and Vengeance from Vault of Glass, which isn't that good of an option compared to the other counterparts. Still, it is the only rocket that can have overflow on its third column, and as for damage, it can roll Cluster Bomb, Vorpal, and Lasting Impression, which aren't the best options. Unfortunately, I don't have one kept in my vault, but here are some theoretical stats based on how other rockets with somewhat same roles performed. If I had to pick a winner, that would clearly be called Comfort. This rocket launcher has an incredible DPS and burst DPS, and because of Envious Assassin, it will perform highly no matter the class you are playing on or what exotic you are using. As for how much of a meta rockets currently are, it's clear that their DPS is superior and they have way better ease of use. But linears aren't that far behind in total damage output. Overall, rockets are most optimal in fireteam scenarios where someone is using Gully and have Wolfpack rounds active. What do you think? Are you using any of these rockets? Do you consider rockets to be a better damage option? And if yes, why? Let me know in the comments below. Feel free to also include what weapon type you would like to see tested next. In the video description, you will find further kinda boring technical details in regards to the test results if you are interested. Make sure to also check out my linear fusion rifle and machine gun damage tests. I hope you enjoyed this one and learned something new from it. As always, thank you very much for watching and consider subscribing for more. Captain Zeppos, out!